Just let your soul glow. Coming to America, the 1988 classic featuring Eddie Murphy, his good friend Arsenio Hall. Hunt Palmer is given a movie assignment weekly here from Off the Bench. A lot of great ones coming in on, uh, on Twitter on some recommendations for next week's assignment. But Hunt, this week you had to watch Coming to America. It's a, a staff favorite, a listener favorite. What are your thoughts? So, uh, oh, the barbershop, oh, no. <laughs> you'll always panic based on my first word. Um, the barbershop scenes had me, like, in stitches. I was really laughing. I mean, that's just classic Eddie Murphy being playing different characters. They're talking about the boxing. I, I really, really laughed at that. The plot of the movie and the entirety of it, I found completely forgettable and not all that enjoyable. All right, that's not that's not a bad that's not a bad review. I mean, you know, the uh, the, the plot of it is it's all about it's all about the fluff, everything around it. It's about the acting and Eddie Murphy and all the the, the big extravagant things. Um, I wish your... I wish it was more I wish it was more about the barbershop than it was yes. about them working at McDowell. Yeah. Like I don't need any of that. They have the golden arches. We have the golden. Um, <laughs> So, the the barbershop the, the 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 barbershop scene without question is one of it may be one of Eddie Murphy's like top three or four scenes in any of his movies. Uh, what was your favorite character within that within that scene? The the white hair guy that's like the most demonstrative talking talking about the boxers and he starts going off on the, the white guy talking about Rocky Marciano. Every time, Every time. <laughs> white man got to bring up Rocky Marciano. Uh, that's, so, that's some classic stuff. It's so good. Um, there's a young Chris Rock in that movie. I don't know if you if you recognize that. He's the valet. He's the valet at the McDowell's Christmas party. Um, a very very young Chris Rock in that movie uh, from 1988, but a great one. All right, so we've got a couple of recommendations coming. Have you seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off? I have seen Ferris Bueller's Day okay. Off. I like that one, not right, just because they get a cup. Yeah. All right, good. So uh, we'll continue to sort through a couple of these and uh, give you your assignment before we get out of here at 9 a.m. for next Friday. Uh, but, uh, Hunt, I-, I believe next Friday we'll be starting to talk about uh, life becoming a little bit more normal uh, and maybe even around sports. Uh, do you feel as if we are coming on the backside of, of, of the pandemic and the stay-at-home stuff and trying to find a way to get back onto the field and into the arenas? Well, I don't know about the arenas. I feel really good about golf. I think that they're going to figure it out. It sounds like the players are committing to play in those events they've got scheduled. This would have been the PGA Championship this week yeah. out in California. They're playing, you know, four ball over at Seminole on Sunday on TV with Dustin Johnson, and, uh, Roy McIlroy, Ricky Fowler, Matthew Wolf. That's going to be something that I'll I'll be excited to watch a little bit of. Um, but. Yeah, I think golf's moving in the right direction. I'm scared about baseball because one thing that I did not pay or I did not consider enough when we canceled everything and said we'll reevaluate, I'm thinking they got to find a way to do this safely. And that was my chief concern. And while that is some people's chief concern, the money has become the biggest issue. And the owners are taking an absolute bath. Now we realize they're all billionaires and 90% of the population kind of shrugs their shoulders and say, we don't care, but. That's not how billionaires operate. They don't just willingly part with a ton of money. That's probably how they got there. And then you've got millionaire players. And the way that the, the proposal read, they've cut half the season, so they cut half of the payers' play. Okay, so the pay- players get 50%. Well, the owners are losing 100% of all ticket sales and all the, the revenues that come with concessions and you know all that memorabilia stuff, like everything. That, so they're... they're Taking, you know, they're taking worse on the financial side. And so they're trying to make a play to make that a little bit more 50-50, and the players and the players union aren't biting. So the money is going to be a serious issue, and you've got some really power-hungry, at times greedy and very smart and stubborn people who are owners and agents and players union reps. And I hope that they see it as an opportunity to shed some positive light on baseball as a beacon of, hope that we're moving forward as opposed to i gotta get mine and if you listen to you know blake smell's comments yesterday from tampa it sounds like there's a lot of i I gotta get mine going on right now that's that's not all that great if they don't play because even if it's the perception of financials they'll never overcome that baseball will never be able to overcome that in my opinion yeah uh, i don't think they're going to allow 
a bunch of needles and syringes in the locker room anytime soon so we can rekindle the fire like they did in 98. So uh, I, I don't, uh, I, I would agree. They won't lose, they can't lose me. There's just nothing they mm-hmm. can do that would make me turn the Cubs off, but they can lose a huge stack, and there's no doubt about that. Well, and if you look around your peer group, your friend base, I mean, you're, you're 30 years old, you're the only one in your crew that's watching ba- Major League Baseball. You know, I mean, like, right, right. Well, mainly for sure. I, there, there's a lot more people watching watching the NFL, and the NBA. I mean, I've got some diehard you know, friends who are huge Braves, the Cubs, the Red Sox fans. But yeah, you're correct. The vast majority are not locked in to, to 162 baseball games. Were you uh, were you locked in to uh, to the documentary recounting the uh, the 2019 championship season for LSU football a couple of nights ago? One for the ages on the SEC Network. If you were, what were your thoughts? I did watch it. It's just fun to, to go down that memory lane. There's not—I didn't, you know, necessarily learn anything totally new, um, but it's just enjoyable to to go back and relive that. And you know, some of the things that stood out were you know, the, the Texas drive right before the half, um, where it was kind of a light. That, that's where the mentality of the program had it mm-hmm. showed that it had changed. We're not going to sit on the football. We're going to go. We're going to go score right here before the half, and then they ran three perfect plays and scored a touchdown. Uh, I could watch the highlights of that Alabama game till the cows come home and not bat an eye once. That was just the most enjoyable, uh, relieving uh, three and a half hours that we needed as a state so badly and got it. And then obviously the Clemson highlights were fun as well. Plus, I'm never going to turn down an opportunity to watch us embarrass Texas A&M and their entire football program because they earned every bit of that. I've been asked a lot this week, uh, whether it be on, on other radio shows around around the region or in just around uh, talking to some people about Miles Brennan. It does seem like the, the page is finally turning for the fan base and starting to look towards next season and a new quarterback. What do you anticipate from the fourth year starter this, this season going into his first year as the guy for LSU? I think he's going to do a nice job. Um, it's not going to look anything like it did last year. No. That's just not possible. Uh, and I just don't know that Miles is quite wired. Now, he could prove me wrong, but I'm here to give my opinion, and here it is. He, I don't think he's quite wired like Joe Burrow in terms of just ruthless competitor, uh, just a, and kind of an arrogance and cockiness to him that knows I'm the baddest dude on the field. And I think Miles is you know, a pretty good dude, and that's kind of, but he's a talented guy who's smart, who's been in this system for a, a while, been in this program for a while, been in this system for well long enough. And I just think that with the weapons around him, uh, he's going to do a good job. There will be times where, inevitably, you go, oh, man, Burrow makes that play. Now we got to punt. But that's just the reality. That's how it goes. And uh, that's when you follow a legend, that's just part of the deal. But I, I really think that he's going to do a good job because, the, the receiving core is so good. The running backs are going to be excellent. I think this. I think Gilbert at tight end is going to be a game changer, and they'll score a lot of points. I think it'll be uh, just fine. Did you see ESPN put our boy Will Wade on their uh, their forty under forty? Had him a number three on the list. Um, did you see that? If, if you did, what were your thoughts on that? No, I did. And Hester and I talked about it. I mean, I, there, I said on Hester's show, like, there's probably not. If you're talking about the future of the program. There's probably not 10 guys I'd rather have over him in the entire sport. Mm-hmm. Um, I could probably dig and find, but based on his age, his accomplishment, the state of the program right now, I, that's that's the guy I want. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that he's the coach. And I think that this team's got a chance to be really, really good. We'll see what these guys are about to do. It looks like they may bump the NBA draft deadline back a little bit, but it's going to be a, a deep, deep roster next year, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, they moved back that uh... – that, that deadline, it looks like uh, indefinitely right now. They're just waiting to see on, on when they announce what happens with, with the leagues and what goes on there. Uh, all right, Hunt, we will, have your, uh, we will have your movie assignment for you uh, coming up before we get out of here at, uh, at 9 a.m. What's the weekend plans? We actually have dinner reservations in New Orleans nice. on Saturday. For a party of 10, I'm excited about it. So let's, uh, let's start to, to get back out in the community and uh, and and – Get to some sense of normalcy. Opening of phase one starting today. I've seen uh, on our uh, on our bank of TVs here in the studio that gyms, restaurants, churches starting to get open and, and operating. Hunt, enjoy the weekend. Stay safe, and uh, we'll talk to you next Friday. All right, thanks, guys. You got it. There he is, Hunt Palmer, checking in.